Hey, I'm Kyle from the Visual Studio Debugger team, and today I'm excited to share how you can quickly debug your exceptions and automatically apply fixes with the updated exception analysis experience. One of the most frustrating parts of the development process is running into exceptions, especially when it's not immediately obvious what the bug is or how to fix it. And the debugger has lots of great tools to let you manually investigate. But what if you could hit an exception, find the root cause, make the fix, rerun it successfully, and do all of that in under 60 seconds. Here, we've got a simple test app that's doing something most developers have probably needed to do at one point or another. We're retrieving some data, and we need to deserialize it into a type, in this case, a list of products. It sounds easy enough, but if I go ahead and run our code, we've got a problem. So let's fire up the debugger and get started. The debugger is going to point to the line where we're seeing our exception and provide us with some tools. I could click on view details to look deeper into the exception for some hints, or come down and inspect my locals, but I'm going to let Copilot take a stab at this and see if it's got any ideas. Right away, Copilot starts pulling in the relevant code, and then it's going to ask for permission to evaluate some expressions to figure out where the failure is in our deserialization logic. At this point, where normally I would just be starting the process of investigating this exception, Copilot has already explained the problem, and on top of that, instead of just suggesting individual code snippets, it's asked us if we'd like to automatically apply a fix, just like agent mode. If I go ahead and tell it to apply my changes, Copilot immediately updates the code to follow its suggestion, showing us a diff that we can choose if we want to keep or undo. I think this all looks fine, but more importantly, I want to know if it actually fixed my problem. So I'm going to run the code again, and this time it says it completed successfully, reading out all 30 of my items, and the exception is gone, all in less than a minute. That was a pretty small example, but there's a good chance you're working in some code bases that have more than two files, where exception analysis in the past hasn't been able to dig down deep enough into the code to find the root cause of the exception. So let's take a look at another test program that's going to force Copilot to do a little bit more thinking, and I'll also give you a quick peek into another one of our latest improvements to exception analysis that's going to help you get even better results. We're back in VS looking at another project now, and this one's going to require a lot more function calling. To keep following along here as simple as possible so you can see exactly what Copilot is actually doing under the hood, I've gone ahead and named all of our function calls in incremental order and removed all of the other fun bits of logic that you would usually find interweaved into production code. But you can use your imagination to see how this would apply to a code base with a lot of nested calls, where an exception occurs later in your program due to a bug that happened earlier, and Copilot has to manually traverse your code base to figure out the cause of the issue. Let's fire up the debugger again to trigger our exception, and this time we're going to do two quick things before we let Copilot get to work. First, let's take a look at the exception. Unlike the previous example, the immediate fix for this exception is probably a bit more obvious. If I look at the value of func1 in our locals window, I tried to get the value of a nullable int without making sure it actually had a value. Rookie mistake on my part, and I can pretty easily just go ahead and use get value or default, or add a null check here, and problem solved. But before I move on and consider this bug fixed, maybe I wasn't really expecting that value to be null. Sure, the code won't crash anymore, but I thought that my call to func1 was actually going to return 15, not null. And herein lies the deeper investigation. If I click into the definition for func1, I see that it's making a call to func2. And if I click into func2, I suspect you can see where this is going. Just like in a lot of large code bases, you're going to keep drilling down through function calls, albeit generally ones that aren't quite as useless as these, until you find the culprit. I'll spare you the toil of doing this manually, and we're going to hand this investigation off to Copilot instead. Before I do that, I'm going to come over here to our Copilot chat window on the side, and I'm going to click on our model picker. Until recently, exception analysis only worked against the default model, which can give you a lot of great results. But we also know that every model has different strengths and weaknesses, which means maybe you're someone who prefers to work with one of VS's other models. By picking the right model for the job, exception analysis will be able to give you even better results, letting you balance speed, accuracy, and cost. I'll go ahead and start the analysis, and you can see that Copilot isn't falling for the trap of just identifying the surface level issue of calling value against null. It's immediately going down that chain the same way that we were, to figure out where the null value is coming from so that we can get to the root of why I'm not seeing the value I expected. When I click the exception analysis button, Copilot of course wants to get to the root of the problem, but especially for more complicated scenarios that might require more investigation, that process is going to take longer than for quicker, smaller scoped exceptions like in the first example. 
exception analysis strikes the balance between doing this deeper investigation and also not making you wait by giving you an initial quick hypothesis after making a few calls and then giving you the option if you want it to continue digging deeper. Here, you can tell it's already on the right track and recognizes both the surface level issue of not calling value on null, as well as that it needs to keep going down this chain to find the function that returns null unexpectedly. But it knows it hasn't found the root of the problem yet, so it ends its response by asking if I want it to continue the investigation. I'll tell it to keep thinking, at which point behind the scenes we enter a deeper thinking mode where Copilot can call more functions and spend more time with the issue now that it's given us an initial quick hypothesis. Copilot's going to keep plugging through these function calls until it identifies our issue, which in our case is very simple. We tried to parse a string that accidentally wasn't a number, and as a result we just returned null, assuming, incorrectly, that the caller would properly handle it. Here you can see in its final response that it's acknowledging both parts of the problem, at which point I could decide how I wanted to handle it, or let it decide which edits it wants to make. This new extended capability makes exception analysis a lot more powerful in handling real-world scenarios that do require that longer, deeper thinking, and coupled with supporting model selection makes exception analysis much more capable of tackling tricky problems. That's a quick look into how you can leverage the updated exception analysis experience to resolve your exceptions even faster. And for more debugging tutorials and future updates on exception analysis, make sure you're subscribed to the VS channel if you haven't already. We have a lot of other great content in the works that we're really excited to share with all of you. That's it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.